So uh, many thanks for the nice invitation to come here. Uh, in this first talk of mine, I, I, I want to present the general theoretical background for this series of six th talks. And for, well, I want to say that everything that I will explain, you can find it in the books of Ser. So, a billion Eladic uh, representations and elliptic curves and lectures on NXP. I will assume that all of you have the, the course descriptions that you can find at the entrance. So, whenever I have to, to, to cite a reference that is listed there, I will just uh, write the corresponding number between uh, square brackets. So, to start, uh, I want to formalize the notion of equidistribution. So we've been speaking this morning already about equidistribution, and we all have a, an, intuit, an, an intuition of uh, what this means. So we'll have a space and uh, some points on this space, and we want to, to formalize that these points are regularly distributed on this space. But let me present you the, the, the precise setting. So we'll have a compact topological uh, space X. And then we'll have a sequence of xn's in this uh, space x. And we'll be given a measure mu on x. So by c of x, I mean the uh, space of continuous complex value functions on x. And then a measure, it's just a continuous uh, a linear form on this Banach space. And I will uh, assume that this measure satisfies two properties. The first one is that it is positive. And by this, I mean that if I apply this measure onto a, a, a function which is real and positive, what I get is a real number, which is also positive. And the second property that I ask to mu is that it's of total mass 1. So if I apply it to the function which is constantly 1 on x, what I get is 1. And once mu satisfies these two properties, you can construct a, a theory of integration on, on this space X. So, for example, if you have U, an open set of X, you can define what is uh, the measure of this open. And by definition, it's the supremum of uh, phi uh, of mu of phi, where phi is a continuous function which is between 0 and the characteristic uh, function of u. Mm -hmm. So the function that is uh, 1 on u and 0 outside. And then you can define what the measure of uh, closed sets is just by taking the complement and define what uh, the, the, the measurable sets are. But most importantly, uh, what it permits us is to, is to define what does it mean that a sequence is uh, equidistributed on X with respect to the measure mu. Or what I will just uh, uh, say that uh, the sequence is mu equidistributed. Okay, and well, this is uh, in the case that uh, for every continuous function in X, uh, 
if I consider uh, the average of the first of the first uh, phi of x i until n, and I uh, consider the limit of this average when n tends to infinity, what I get is uh, the measure of the function of phi. Okay? Well, let's see an example why this matches with uh, our uh, uh, idea of what equidistribution should mean. So, for example, take, uh, take x to be the interval 0, 1 in R and uh, take for mu the uh, uniform measure. Then suppose that you have a sequence xn which is mu equidistributed. Then uh, you could take uh, a sub-interval i in, in x and well consider what is the the measure of this uh, sub interval well it i can apply the definitions and then it will be the limit when n goes to infinity of these uh, averages of the mm, of the, uh, the the characteristic function of the interval applied to these uh, uh, x i's but this is another uh, way to say that this is just the number of xi's that uh, lie uh, it's, uh, inside of the interval i, where i is up to n, mm -hmm. divided by n. And well, this is just uh, the length of the interval. So what this is telling us is that the the probability to find x i's inside of this interval uh, is uh, proportional to the length of the interval, and this is this really matches with our intuition of what equidistribution should be. Uh, but it, it's better to have in mind this other definition because this will not always be true. Uh, if the if the measure of the boundary of this interval is zero this works, but if it's not, as, it's with, as it happens for some of the measures that you considered this morning, then this might be wrong. Okay? Good, then let me place in the case that uh, will interest us. So, second section. And it's the case of a compact group. Okay, so let G be a compact group. And X will be the set of conjugacy classes of G. So this X inherits a topology from G. It's also compact. And most importantly, it inherits a measure. So mu will be the hard measure of G, and then I can consider a measure on, on X that I, st I will still denote by mu, and that it defined the following way. So for every, uh, or for a function on A, a continuous function on X, I will define mu of phi to be the following. Well, I can consider the, the projection of G, the natural projection of G onto its set of conjugacy classes, and then mu of phi, by the definition, it's the measure, or this mu is the hard measure, of uh, the function phi composed by pi. Okay? And I will be interested in the particular case that the sequence that we have is indexed by the set of primes of a number field. So 
let f, from now on, f will be a number field. And I will denote by p uh, the, uh, the set of primes of f. And for what we'll, we do, we'll have to exclude all the time uh, uh, a finite set of p, so let s in p be a finite set. And then uh, what I want to do now is to connect the idea of equidistribution to uh, L functions. So assume that we are given an, or uh, an ordering of the primes uh, of p by norm, take of the primes not lying in S by norm. And then what do I mean by this? Well, uh, I just mean that uh, if uh, i is less than j, then the norm of uh, pi is less than the norm of pj. So if uh, the number field is q, this is just the, the ordering of the primes by size. But if this uh, number field is bigger than q, then I might have uh, distinct primes with the same norm, and then I'm just taking uh, one particular uh, ordering such an ordering, and everything that I will do will be independent of this choice, okay? So, in this situation, yeah, x is, uh, is, the, uh, it, uh, is the set of conjugacy classes of G. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, it's uh, the, the, the what you mean in the classical sense. It's uh, it, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, maybe a, a more suggest uh, a more suggestive notation for me of. Phi, you, you generally write it like uh, the integral of phi of x, mu of x, where x is in g, no? But this is yeah, just notation. Okay, so assume that we are given a sequence of elements in X, this set of conjugacy classes of the compact group G, which is indexed by uh, primes that are ordered by norm. And assume also given rho an irreducible representation of G. Then I will define an Euler product attached to this row and to this sequence of XPIs. And so S is a complex variable and this is defined to be the product for I uh, list one of the inverses of the reciprocals of this, uh, the characteristic polynomials of rho applied to the XIPs. and evaluate it at the norm of the pi, pi i's to the minus s inverse. So the, since this group is compact, this will have eigenvalues of absolute value 1, and this tells me that this Euler product, in fact, converges for the real part of s uh, greater than 1. 
I will make now an assumption. And this is an assumption that will be satisfied in all the examples that we will uh, consider from now on. And in fact, that was satisfied uh, in the example that uh, Peter considered this morning. And it's the following. It's that uh, this Euler product is meromorphic at the uh, closed half plane at the right of one and has no zeros no zero or no pole it has no zero and no pole at this half plane except Possibly for a uh, a pole or a zero, uh, except possibly uh, for a pole or a zero at s equals one. Okay, and then under this assumption, then we have a theorem of Sir that connects equidistribution to uh, L function and it says L functions and it says the following so the sequence of XPIs is uh, mu equidistributed on this set of conjugacy classes of G this mu is this projection onto X of the hard measure of G even only if For every uh, irreducible and non trivial representation row of uh, G, this Euler product attached to row is holomorphic. and uh, non-vanishing at s equals 1. So this uh, zero or pole that in principle is allowed uh, by the assumption at s equals 1 in fact does not exist. Eh? We don't have it. And well, I will let me call this uh, by a star, because I will uh, use this uh, later. And well, this theorem is an application of the of the Tauberian theorem of Vinari Kahara to the uh, logarithmic derivative of this Euler product. You can find it in the book of Zier. Well, what we are now going to do is to uh, see examples. The first one, so take E to be an elliptic curve uh, defined over Q without complex multiplication. So in this case, the field F will be Q. The set S will be the set of primes of bad reduction of this elliptic curve. And then, as we have seen also this morning, if we have a prime that is not in this uh, set S, we might consider the, the local factor of the elliptic uh, curve uh, E at P, um, and it will have the following shape. So, uh, mm, yeah, so let me denote by VL the Tate module, uh, the Tate module attached to E, and there is an action of the absolute Galois group 
GQ on it that uh, gives rise to an alavic representation that I will denote by rho e. Okay? Then how I define uh, the, the local factor at p for these primes, well, I just take the, the, termi the, the terminal of 1 minus rho e of an arithmetic Frobenius at p, acting on the Tate module of e. Mm -hmm. And since uh, p is outside of this set s, this makes full sense, and we'll denote this by Lp of et. Okay, so as we said this morning, this uh, a polynomial uh, has an uh, integer coefficient, and in fact, it's of the following form: it's one minus a p t plus b t square, where this a p is a p plus one minus the number of points of the reduction of the elliptic curve at p, which are defined over f p. And uh, we know that uh, the roots will uh, have absolute uh, value uh, square root of p. So if I then consider the same polynomial, but evaluate it at t divided by the square root of p, then I have that this polynomial has all roots of absolute value 1. This will be denoted this way, and it's uh, the normalized local factor at p. Well, because of this property that the roots come in conjugate pairs and have absolute value 1, uh, they correspond, uh, there is a, there is a a close relation between these polynomials and this group. It won't be, let me recall the definition of this group. So this will be uh, two by two matrices, which are mm, unitary. So the inverse of A is its complex transpose, and that have the terminal one. Yeah? Mm. Oh. Okay. Well, so why is this connected? Because any polynomial uh, satisfying the properties that satisfies this one corresponds, it's, it's the characteristic polynomial of a matrix in here. And even more, because any two matrices in this group ha sharing the same uh, characteristic polynomial are in fact conjugated inside this group. So. The normalized local factor determines a unique conjugacy class inside this group. Or uh, if, I, if you let me denote this group by G, and we follow the, the notation, the con our convention of notations, uh, an element. xp in x. Mm -hmm. So, what are the irreducible representations of SU2? The, they are the uh, symmetric powers. of the standard representation of SU2. So what does uh, this theorem say? Well, this theorem says that the, the, the sequence of the XX uh, PIs hmm, is mu equidistributed on X, even only if for every N, 
gravity non-zero n, the Euler product attached to this representation is a holomorphic and non-vanishing at s equals one. And so I am excluding the trivial representation by asking n to not to be zero. And well, uh, only very recently we know that this is true thanks to the impressive uh, breakthrough of Harris, Taylor, and many other people. And this is the classical Sato Tate conjecture. Uh, maybe I can still present it in a more familiar way. So, uh, yeah. I think, uh, I mean, I mean, so, so in, the, in this generality, I think you find it in the book of Serre, but because he took the essence of, of many theorems of many people who were essentially doing this. And I mean, uh, the in this way, and uh, this way, it's where I found it. But I mean, uh, what we have seen this morning about the, the, the the theorem of Dirichlet is already considering the non-vanishing of a certain L function. Ah, for non-abelian. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, OK. Mm, so let, let me consider here the trace map and to the interval minus 2 to 2. Uh, well, mu is the hard measure here. I can consider the push, the push forward of uh, the measure mu here, and it's an exercise to compute that this is 1 over 2 pi of the square root of x squared minus 4 dx. Okay, so the semicircular measure. So saying that the XP's are mu equidistributed is saying that uh, if I call this, let me call this the satotate measure, is saying that the AP's that I uh, define here are equidistributed with respect to the satotate measure. Okay, so this is all I want to say about the classical satellite conjecture in this uh, series of talks. We will go in another direction. So let's see another example. What does it happen if E an elliptic curve with complex multiplication. Say by uh, so an order in a quadratic imaginary field uh, K. And I'm going to make the following simplifying assumption. Let uh, let's assume that E is defined over a number field F that contains this K. Mm -hmm. Well, I can define the... the uh, again, I take uh, S to be the set of primes of bad reduction of E, and for a prime uh, not in S, I can define what the uh, local factor of... E at P is. And I could, well, uh, the, I could do exactly the same that I have done here, except that when I arrive at this point, 
it's, not, it's no longer true that this is holomorphic at one. Because uh, the choice of the group that we have made is wrong. Which group does one have to, cho to, to choose? Well, uh, in this case, we have uh, some additional information, and it's that there exists a Hecke character attached to the elliptic curve on this group of ideals of, of f that permits to write this local factor in the following way. It's 1 minus psi e on p t, 1 minus psi e at p t bar. OK, so by this I mean the, the ideal, which is 1 at all places, except that it's a normal uh, a uniformizer at the place corresponding to p. And, this, uh, and then what I will do is to take for g the unitary group of degree 1. This is just uh, the set of uh, the group of complex numbers that have absolute value 1. And then I define the class xp to be psi e at p normalized. And of course, this is an element uh, of, of G, by definition, uh, which in this case we have an abelian G, so it coincides with its set of conjugacy classes. Well, what are the irreducible representations of the unitary group of degree 1? Well, this group is, uh, is a billion, so they are just characters. And I have one for every integer. And they send me z to z to the a. Let me denote this by psi phi sub a. Then the, the, the theorem that I just erased, what tells us is that uh, the sequence of x pi's is mu equidistributed, mu, the, the, the hard measure of, of the, this uh, unitary group, the circle, which will be the uniform measure because it must be invariant under translations. Then, in this case, I will have that the, the APIs, so again, uh, I can define here APIs in this way. Uh, oh, sorry, 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 I, I didn't want to say that, not yet. So this is equidistributed even only if for every A, which is a non-zero, the Euler product attached to phi a is uh, holomorphic and doesn't vanish at s equals 1. Hmm? And let's do the same as before. Let's take a kind of trace map on this uh, u1. In this case, I sent uh, a complex number z to z plus its complex conjugate. Hmm? Uh, then I have here the hard measure and the push forward of this measure. You can compute that it's just 1 over pi of dx over the square root of 4 minus x squared. So this is the measure, this u-shaped measure that Drew showed us this morning. 
Mm -hmm. So saying that the XPAs are equidistri mu equidistributed is saying that these uh, A, APs that I defined there are, let me call this measure the complex multiplication measure, are equidistributed with respect to this measure. Okay, uh, I did this assumption that the field of complex multiplication is defined. It's, it's okay. That's why you don't have this spike at, uh, at zero. There is a third case, and I will say, I will in, uh, insist on this again tomorrow, the case in which the, you don't have this, and then you get the spike. Mm -hmm. Okay, so at this point, it might, it might have uh, looked to you uh, uh, arbitrary or at least unjustify the choice of this compact group G. What I want to do now is to, uh, to give a uniform explanation of this group G, the, 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 what, will, what will be the satellite group. Hmm? So the third section is uh, the satellite group. And then what we will consider now, it's A will be an abelian variety, say of dimension G. And then we can do the same as before. We, it has attached a Tate module. I, when I write this V, I mean the tensor with Q. And the absolute Galois group of F acts on it and gives us an Aladic representation on it that I denote by rho A. Mm -hmm. And now I can, S is again the uh, set of primes of bad reduction for A, and uh, I will define a normalized local factor for every prime not in S. And I do this exactly the same as before. just the determinant of 1 minus rho a an arithmetic Frobenius acting on the Tate module. And again, this is a polynomial with integer coefficients, uh, all of whose roots have absolute value, the square root of p, and coming conjugate pairs. So I do the same as before. I define the normalized local factor to be the local factor evaluated at t divided by the square root of p. And now, as you said this morning, these, uh, these kind of polynomials are connected to uh, the unitary symplectic group of degree 2G. Uh, this is the group of matrices of this size, which are symplectic. And unitary. So let me Ah, let me recall the definitions. So, SP to G of C is the, those matrices, squared matrices of size to G, that preserve a skew symmetric uh, matrix. So, A times S times the transpose of A is S, where this S is uh, some matrix whose uh, transpose is minus s. Okay, and so for example, you it, it's, you can choose this. It's this matrix, and 
No, it won't depend. Uh, Yeah, I think it follows through. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. S is invertible. Mm. Ah, okay, I was defining the, the unitary group. So it's the matrices whose uh, inverse is its complex transpose. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how is this uh, related to this group? Well, again, uh, the characteristic polynomial of a matrix in this group uh, satisfies the same properties. So, and, and any two matrices with the same characteristic polynomial are again conjugated inside this group. So the normalized local factor defines you a conjugacy class in the unitary symplectic group. So what's the idea? So the idea is that uh, for a generic uh, hmm. but no, I don't want to call this the X piece because it will be it will be something I, I want to keep this letter for later. So j let's just say that this defines an element. in here. So the idea is that for a generic, the normalized local factors are uh, equidistributed on the set of conjugacy classes with respect to the Haar measure of USP. But so what does it mean <laughs> uh, generic? Well, for genus 1, generic means that the, the elliptic curve doesn't have complex multiplication. Otherwise, this is already not true. So what, what do we want to do? So we have constructed an assignment from the set of primes of F to the conjugacy classes of USP that sends a prime P to the normalized local factor. And what we will do is to construct a subgroup, the satellite group of A, of the unitary symplectic group, such that this assignment factors through the set of conjugacy classes of this group And then uh, I define for, it, for HP a conjugacy class in this group. And these conjugacy classes are equidistributed with respect to the hard measure of the satellite group of A in its set of conjugacy classes. That's why I wanted to keep the X for these conjugacy classes. Ah, yes, yeah, sorry, sorry. So let's construct this group. How does one construct this group? Well, one takes GL to be the Zariski closure. of the image of the Aladic representation attached to A. Okay, and then one defines GL1 to be the intersection of this GL 
that I have just defined with the uh, symplectic group. In this case, I consider a co coefficient in QL, points in defined over QL. And this, we should look at this as the, the, the effect of normalizing the, the local factors. It's taking this intersection uh, with the symplectic group. We are not only lying, we don't want to lie only inside the, the, the group of symplectic similitudes. And then I'm uh, going to do, do something that it might look strange to you, which is take uh, an embedding of QL into C. And why I'm doing this? Because I want to define the, the, the group GL1 J to be the set of complex points, the group of complex points, of the base change of uh, GL1 to C via this uh, embedding Yota. And now we are in, uh, in condition to state the, the definition of the satellite group. The satellite group of A, we will denote this way, is a maximal compact subgroup of this GL1 J. So observe that this is a, uh, so uh, any two maximal compact subgroups are conjugated. So this is this this makes the satellite group only well defined up to conjugation. But this will be enough for our equidistribution uh, purposes because we are in fact only concerned with uh, equidistribution of uh, uh, elements in the set of conjugacy classes. Hmm? In principle, it depends. On the, on the choice of the embedding and uh, on the choice of the prime L. The conjecture said that it should be independent up to conjugacy. But this will, come, this will come now. So this is the first part. The second part is that for every P not in S, uh, I define XP, so we still need to define those XPs, is the conjugacy class of uh, the image by the Aladic representation of an arithmetic Frobenius divided by the norm of P to the minus one half. Okay, via this embedding yota, I want to see these having complex coefficients. Okay, sorry. GL1, it's still rationals in QL. Ah, uh, GL1, Yota, yeah, exactly. This already has complex coefficients via this uh, embedding. Mm -hmm. uh, one first question is, why does this lie inside, sorry, is the conjugacy class of this element in the satellite group of A? Why this lie in the satellite group? Well. Uh, to see that this is inside a, a compact subgroup, uh, observe that uh, since I'm normalizing here, all the eigenvalues of this matrix will have absolute value 1. 
And then, if I take the semi-simple part, this is true. Mm -hmm. These elements are conjectured to be semi-simple, so, uh, but we don't know it, so I have to put it. Mm. If I don't take the semi-simple part, it, it might not be that a matrix uh, uh, with all eigenvalues, in fact, one lies in a compact group. I can take this matrix. Its nth powers are, are not bounded. But if I erase this, so if I make this semi-simple, then it's very bounded. Okay. So what does the generalized Hattotate conjecture say? I can finally state it. Well, the first implicit part is that the satellite group up to conjugacy does not depend on the choice of the prime L or the embedding yota. And the second part is the one that you could write after all that I have said, and it's that the the set of these, uh, the sequence of these uh, conjugacy classes XP is uh, equidistributed on the set of conjugacy classes of the Satotate group with respect to uh, the R measure of the Saturday group. Okay, and now to finish, I want to give you some examples. Well, in fact, I want to revisit the, the, the examples that we have already seen. So, take E to be an elliptic curve uh, defined over Q without CM. Then, uh, by Sir's open, opens image theorem, GL1 or GL is just a GL2 uh, QL. Okay, Th this is the theorem that Chantal uh, uh, explained to us this morning in another language. Hmm? And then, of course, if I take the intersection of this group with the uh, symplectic group, what I get is the symplectic group. Now, mm, and well, now we are done because uh, a maximal compact subgroup of uh, is GL1 um, base change to C by means of an embedding yota is just uh, the symplectic unitary group of degree two, or the U. Uh, so, sorry, the, the the special unitary group of degree two, which is the, the symplectic unitary group. Okay, and they coincide at this dimension. So taking a unitary group is taking the maximal compact subgroup. Let's look at the other example. So E is an elliptic curve with CM by a quadratic imaginary field K that we assume to be contained on this field of definition F of the elliptic curve. What do we get in this case? Well, in this case, GL is just a two-dimensional uh, torus attached to, to the quadratic uh, imaginary field K. So uh, what do I mean by this? This is the restriction of scalars from K to Q of the multiplicative group. And well, if you don't know what this is, it, 
Well, in fact, all that you have to know is that for any uh, key, key algebra, the set of points defined over this algebra of this algebraic group is this Q algebra tensored with K and taking invertible elements. So let's take C for this Q algebra. So set of C points of uh, this maximal torus base changing to C. will just be uh, hmm. C star cross C star, okay? Because uh, K tensored with C is just C cross C. And now, uh, so I want, uh, what does it happen if I, 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 I ask this, uh, this, uh, this group to be uh, I see this group inside the GL2. What does it happen if I ask it to be sim symplectic? Hmm? So this is telling us that, so if I want to compute this GL1 yacht, I uh, have to consider uh, this group that I prefer to write diagonally. with sp to c so uh, and well you can you can see what this is let's ask such a matrix to preserve uh, such a skew symmetric matrix Well, if you do this product, you just get uh, Z1, Z2, minus Z1, Z2. So what you have is that these two complex numbers have to be inverse of each other. And well, what is a maximal compact subgroup? <laughs> of this group. If this Z doesn't have absolute value one, this will be unbounded. So I want this Z to be bounded want this z to have absolute value 1. And of course, this is isomorphic to the unitary group. So we have recovered the, the, the two groups that we considered before. And yeah, I think I will stop here. <laughs>